Oh, and after Colorado Gives Day, you can, you can still give. Please. I'm trying to buy some plugs. Anyway, <laughs> Steve Corbell with Stop the Shakedown. Thank you for being here. Good to be here. All right. So, first of all, thank you for this deliciously wonderful shirt. Should fines go to charity? Whose fines are we talking about? We're talking about any fine levied by any government agency in the state of Colorado. Uh, like what? Are we talking speeding tickets? Yes, speeding tickets, uh, any criminal offenses, any regulatory fines, you name it. it we're basically going to remove that conflict of interest of the same group of people making laws, enforcing laws, and having a financial benefit from enforcing those laws. For those who might not be following, you are the creator of an initiative that you are now circulating petitions for called Stop the Shakedowns. And you're out on the street right now gathering signatures in hopes of getting this on the ballot uh, uh, for next November. Correct. All right. Tell me exactly what this does. What this does is it makes it illegal for any government entity to keep the money from any fines, forfeitures, or other financial penalties. Instead, if the action that elicits the fine has a victim, that fine goes to the victim up to their damages. If there's no victim, such as a speeding ticket or something like that, if, let's say, for example, you're driving home and hopefully this doesn't happen to you, but you get a speeding ticket, you get to pick what charity that money goes to. Right, stop, stop there, because this, this is a delicious idea. So you're telling me I get a speeding ticket, and I go, I know why I'm getting a speeding ticket. It's because this city wants more revenue. You know, for, for a long time, something like 80% of uh, Lakeside's uh, revenue came from speeding tickets. So you need to you slow down here. Uh, but they're enforcing the law. That's a good thing. That's part of their job. You're saying if I get that speeding ticket, I get to decide where my $50 goes. What, and I can choose any charity? It has to be a, an eligible charity that's re recognized by the Secretary of State in Colorado that you don't have any financial interest in. Other than that... So I can't you, donate it to the Independence Institute? Well, if you have a financial interest, no, you can't. They pay me. Well, then you can't do that. Well, but I you, don't love this anymore. <laughs> but everybody else can. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but basically what happens is, is it's going to fix lots of problems. It's a very simple idea when you think about it. It's not been circulated before in the country, but it's a very simple idea. It eliminates the conflict of interest. It eliminates any f f financial motivation of enforcement, leaving basically what the people would generally prefer and that's, if you've done something wrong, if you've been a hazard to the public, they'll do something about it. But they're not going to be coming up with, well, we need more money in our budget, so let's just nail John on the way home, because they can't have the money. So the nice thing about this is, not only is it going to end up with more judicious enforcement, it's also going to end up with some rather delicious byproducts as well. Picture $200 million more going to charity each year. Right now, the state of Colorado had to come up with a fiscal impact study on this initiative before we went, got to the title board. And in that study, they said a couple of rather interesting things. First, $256 million is what they're planning to take from us in 2019. Right, so slow, slow down there. So when you put this through the system to get it onto the ballot, uh, what's known as a fiscal impact statement happens, or how, whatever they call it. And, and it's, will it bring money into the legislature, to the, to the state? Will it cost the state money? If so, how much? And they say that this thing is going to cost the state over $250 million a year. Is that right? Well, that's where it starts. But then in 2020, one year later, they've also planned $322 million. So what do you suppose the state had in mind to deal with the fact that they have TABOR that stops them from increasing taxes? They can do it through enforcement. A 20% increase from 2019 to 2020 is not proportionate with the number of people moving to Colorado. So obviously, this is part of their plan. All right, so you're saying, yes, it's going to cost the state money, but really what the state is doing is yet another end around TABOR. They're enforcing more high fine uh, crimes, violations, whatever you want to call them, in order to make cash. If Stop the Shakedowns passes, they can still enforce those laws. Uh, those fines will still be levied against bad guys. It's just that the state's not going to get the cash. Right, and the net result is there's going to be a lot less bad guys because not everyone's a criminal unless the state turns them into criminals for their own financial gain. Well, let me ask you the, a few of the obvious questions. Mm -hmm. They're going to say this is going to drain a quarter, uh, quarter billion dollars out of our, our budget going up. 
how are we going to make that up? People are going to get hurt. There's going to be cuts. I can, I can hear it already. There's going to be cuts here. There's going to be cuts there. Everything's going to get cut. Um, don't they have a point? Well, let me ask you this. How much of that money is already being devoted to collecting more money instead of actually enforcing laws that really should be enforced? I think there's a lot of money going towards that endeavor. And so my guess is that any cuts that are likely to happen are probably cutting things that people didn't want in the first place. And so if you're talking about city budgets, they have options too. I mean, yes, you were talking about Lakeside, and I happen to think a lot about Mountain View and Morrison as well. You take more than 50% of their revenue from traffic fines. Okay, so what are they supposed to do? Well, the quick, pretty quick answer, they didn't need to be a city to begin with. They could subscribe to county services and still live within their budget. So there are simple answers All right, to this. So are you, are you conceding that should this pass, it could have some devastating effects on local governments financially? If and, they don't know what to do about it, yeah. If they don't know what to do about it. All right. And you're okay with that. Is that the purpose of why you're doing this? Well, actually, the purpose I'm doing this is to try and elicit fair enforcement. The reason I got into politics to begin with was to stop abuses of authority, uh, the, the government overreach that I hear you talk about a lot. I'm fighting that same battle. And so I think that we've given government the ability. Well, let me back up just a second and say the reason I believe government should exist is for people to be able to pool their resources to do things that they can't do so well on their own, like fixing our damn roads, for example, okay? And so what happens is, is somehow this, this power, this authority has gotten out of control and they're using it against us. We're no longer the people are the government, it's become the people versus the government and that's not the way this country was designed. So this is a very important step in bringing it back to the design of the country that we all wanted that, that uh, we just aren't anymore. All right, let me ask you the other part. These, I don't want to get a speeding ticket. Of course. All right, I, I just don't want to get it. I don't want to get it even if I get a choice which charity I give the fine to. So you know, I'm, on one level, I'm thinking, this is terrific. Uh, but I know that there has to be an incentive for these local governments to enforce the law. And that's what they're doing here. There's also a cost to do it. So if, if they're going out, out to give out speeding tickets, which they rightfully should be doing, how are they going to pay for those costs to just to even do that? Well, most police departments in municipal locations are supported by property tax anyway. This is an additional revenue source that really shouldn't be a revenue source. I mean, every one of us would probably agree that if you're going 60 in a school zone, you should get a ticket. Um, but the difference is in a, a more remote location, let's say somebody's out in, in Brush and they're going 57 in a 55 zone in the middle of the night and they get, they get cited for that. I'm sorry, that's about the money. That is not about safety. So what this does is it forces government authorities to basically put their money where their mouth is. If you say it's wrong, go ahead and enforce it. But you haven't answered my question okay. on this, which is <clears throat> that car that's going 60 in the school zone, we want to enforce that. There are costs involved with enforcing that. What's wrong with those costs of enforcement coming out of the fees that are charged by it? Because it brings an, a, a, an unholy incentive. Uh, really what happens is, and some people abuse the system and some people don't. But the fact is- You say is, people, you mean governments. I mean governments, right, of course. And, and so what ends up happening is, is it, it basically takes away that incentive, but still, since they're supposed to be funded by other taxes anyway, they really don't need to spend additional money to get additional money. My guess is that when the, when the budgets are cut to something reasonable and they're not collecting this money, then what happens is the enforcement that the people would prefer to begin with, rather than what we have now. So you're saying, listen, local government or state government, if this is important, you will find the money to do the enforcement. Precisely. All right. Do you believe that there's a lot of abuse in, in fines? I mean, we've talked speeding tickets. Give, give me some other examples that are beyond speeding tickets. Well, let's, let's look at uh, regulatory market conduct exams. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> regulatory market conduct exams. This is where basically, that's where the, we get the name Stop the Shakedowns. That's a shakedown. That's where they come to your office. They find a reason to fine you no matter how minute it may be. And they'll continue to investigate until they you find have an example? something. Oh, Department of Insurance, for example. When, uh, uh, let's say every once in a while, they'll come knocking on your door and they'll do a market conduct exam. They'll study everything you've done as an insurer for a period of time, maybe six months. 
and they're hoping to find that you've misquoted some, some premiums. They're hoping to find that you've paid some claims late. But if they haven't found that, they'll come up with something less than that because the whole goal is to fine you. I believe that from the Department of Insurance, if you're stealing, oh, yeah, they should come after you. If you're doing something really wrong, they should come after you. But at the same time, they, they shouldn't be inventing reasons to fine you because that's not in anyone's interest. And jobs can be harmed by it. Companies can be harmed by it. And so, once again, this goes to the same vein where if you've done something wrong, good. We want enforcement. All right, let, 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 yeah. Let's play with this uh, another way. So the government who, who needs to enforce this, obviously they're going to enforce less of this because they're not going to be making, we're not going to be making this, the same amount of money. Um, so that means they're going to have to be very specific, and you're, you're hoping that they choose real issues, not just issues that make money. That's the goal. All right. Um, there, what about the cost of administering fines to begin with? I know we talked about going out there and getting that. There's still going to be collections. Now there's going to be collections and distribution out to thousands of different charities. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody's got to pay for that distribution as well. Who pays for this? Well, the state. How does had that work? To, well, the state, in the, mark, in the fiscal impact study, the state came back and said it's going to cost an extra $800,000 a year to administer this. So, on a $38 billion budget, I think they'll figure it out. But every government is going to have to figure out how to administer to these charities. Right. And in part of my testimony to the, uh, um, at the Capitol to the Legislative Committee, they asked some questions like this. And we came up with some solutions, but it is going to be up to the jurisdictions to figure it out. All right. People want to help out. They want to get involved. Where do they go? www.stoptheshakedownsplural.com. Uh, you'll find all kinds of information about this. You'll find uh, all kinds of good stuff. Best of luck with you. Let me know how it happens. Check me out on KL Radio, Denver Post, and we'll see you next week.